may I interject here for just a moment, apropos of uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Revelo's uh, uh, statement, I would guess that uh, some, somebody, uh, that the John Birch Society would reply that that was not official policy, the statement about the rehearsal for President Kennedy's uh, uh, funeral. Would this vitiate your objection? Well, I don't know what official policy is. When Ben Epstein or Arnold Foster stands up representing the Anti-Defamation League, what we say the agency is labeled with. If Mr. Oliver walks around the country and stands on extremist platforms and continues to be a member of the John Birch Society National Council, what he says must be attributed to the organization which he represents just as much as the remarks of Robert Welch must be charged to the John Birch Society so long as he continues as its head. Mr. Epstein, the whole question of danger on the right, uh, reactionary groups, uh, brings up the old statement that uh, we say it, it could never happen here. We always refer to the fascist takeover in Central Europe, in, in, in Germany. Uh, is this why you wrote this book? Do you think there is a danger of it happening here? Well, I do think it can happen here, and I couldn't help but feeling as I watched this film, of this meeting of the John Birch Society in New Jersey, that I might have been in Nazi Germany in 1934, where I sat in such meetings as a student at the University of Berlin and listened to the kinds of lies and half-truths and oversimplifications that were made in this meeting. The kind of an attack that was made on an illustrious jurist like Supreme Court Justice Warren is really hard to believe. To make the statement that Supreme Court Justice Warren doesn't know the difference between a law book and a Sears Roebuck catalog is shocking. Here was a man who has given 50 years of his life to public service. He graduated from law school in 1914. He was the district attorney of Alameda County for 14 years. He was the attorney general of the state for four years. He was the governor of the great state of California for 10 years, and he was appointed Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court in 1953 by President Eisenhower. And yet, this gentleman from Wagner College has the audacity to charge the Supreme Court Chief Justice with not knowing the difference between a law book and a Sears Roebuck catalog. This is the kind of distorted lie that we heard from Hitler or Stalin. The other remark that I thought was a classic example of the propagandist technique was when the same professor, and I put the professor in quotes because I don't consider him a scholar after what he said here today, when he said, Karl Marx alias Mordecai. What did he intend to do by using that phrase, alias Mordecai? What do you was think he, he implying that Karl Marx was a Jew? Well, Karl Marx's father was a Jew. And Karl Marx's father was converted and baptized just as Karl Marx was to Christianity. In the same way that Barry Goldwater's father was a Jew and was converted to Christianity. Would we refer to Barry Goldwater today as Nay Goldwasser? Is this the implication to bring out the Jewish aspect of Karl Marx's background, the way the Hitler government constantly referred to communist Jewish conspiracy? Ben, Ben, you know, in the ADL's search of communism down to its very beginnings, one of the things that we did was to examine Karl Marx's life from beginning to end. And as I recall it, the only place before that I heard the name Mordecai attached to Karl Marx was, it was in Theodor Fritsch's book, A Handbook, on the Jewish question, which was published about 80 years ago in Germany, went into about 35 editions, was regarded as the Bible of all the anti-Semites, was one of the base documents on which Nazi uh, Nazism was built. And I have never seen this translated into English. I have never seen it in an encyclopedia. You can look at the Columbia Encyclopedia, the Britannica, you will find it nowhere. I just wonder, Ben what the source of Dr. Bannis's information is for the allegation Mordecai. And I would just interject here, lest there be any misunderstanding. Uh, on the record, the uh, John Birch Society is not 
anti-Semitic. Only, I only say that so that our, we are our, our to audience is not... We are referring to made by the gentleman who yes, led sir. the discussion. Right. Mr. Welsh has said that uh, he is not an anti-Semite and uh, the John Birch Society will never be anti-Semitic so long as he is uh, added to leadership. I only put that in for the sake of the record. Dr. Larson, you had something you wanted to say there. I was uh, reminded as this discussion progressed of a very curious coincidence, which is that when it comes to honest-to-goodness combating the spread of international communism, not liberalism at home under the name of communism, real communism around the world. It's curious how often the Birch Society and the communists turn out on the same side of major votes. Both the Birch Society and the communists were against the United Nations bond issue. Both of them condemned Hammarskjöld. Both of them are against foreign aid, one of our chief weapons against the spread of communism. Both are against the reciprocal trade program. Both are against NATO. Both are shoulder to shoulder on these practically all of the key elements of our foreign policy that have to do with stemming the tide of communism around the world. And the only way you can explain this is that the, uh, the real program, as some of the more candid statements of the Birch Society have admitted, the real program is aimed at Washington. It's aimed at people at home, your own government, your own neighbor. And I'm afraid in the process, far from, uh, far from combating international communism in the true sense, that some of us have had to stand up against in official positions on the real firing line and know what it's about. Far from doing that, the Birch Society is undermining that effort. It's undermining it in many ways uh, by, by destroying or by injuring and damaging the most important tools and the most important weapons that we have in this fight for an aid program, reciprocal trade, United Nations, and all the rest. Gentlemen, if I may ask this question, what, what do you think, notwithstanding your criticisms and your ra rather outspoken criticisms of the John Birch Society, what do you think is the attraction of this organization? Now, I only uh, understand that last year, in 1963, the John Birch Society brought in over $1 million. Uh, it does not appeal only to uh, ignorant people. Many of the people, most of the people that I've met of the John Birch Society are very intelligent, uh, productive members of, of our society. What is the attraction well, to these the people appeal, of the John Birch Society? Sir? Uh, Bill, if I may just start this off, I yeah. think the appeal is a perfectly uh, understandable one. The appeal, as we saw, was patriotic, religious, the flag, the prayer, uh, the welfare of the country, and I think these are aims and goals that all decent Americans are very much dedicated to. And I don't think it's the aims or the goals that we're so concerned about as the means which the John Birch Society wants to use to get their brand not of democracy. You heard the phrase mobocracy. You heard the denunciation through the phrase republic. This constant effort to deny the basic, uh, for example, the attack on the whole civil rights program. They start by saying, uh, we're for civil rights, and then go on to charge the Negro Revolution with being the work of communists without any comment or discussion about the need to try to correct the evils and the injustices and the discrimination against American Negroes. What I think is so dangerous about uh, the John Birch Society is one of the groups is that they seek to offer false answers to very serious problems. They try to oversimplify the problem and give an answer, a simple answer. It's all the fault of an international communist conspiracy here in America. Well, all of us are against communism, but we cannot look at the United States in 1964 and say that there is a huge communist conspiracy on the American scene. It just isn't so.